We're popping in quickly for a special vlog. This is going to be about the upcoming summer solstice on June 20th to 22nd in that uh, time range. I can't remember exactly which date was the uh, the solstice, but it's in that time frame here coming up. So um, I'm also going to talk about the red rose transfiguration into love, which I've been trying to write a blog about, but um, for some reason I'm just stuck writing. So it seems like I can talk about it more easily than uh, write about it. And maybe it's all in divine order, so to speak, to have uh, both of these both of these um, transmissions uh, together. So I'm in Sammy's room and we are going to talk about the upcoming solstice, which a lot of you are feeling is um, pretty significant. So I just have a couple of slides to walk through as I talk. Yes, Sammy. So the summer solstice I am uh, seeing that the theme to me is about harmonizing into coherence, meaning that all the uh, leaps, expansions, insights, awarenesses that we've been going through is all now coming together. So. Uh, we've been feeling lots of transmissions, light, and then there was sound and, I mean, dragons, all kinds of information that's been coming in, particularly for the last few years. But um, I'm seeing things from several years ago coming into my awareness. Uh, so there, you know, they, we've had all these activations now. And now there is a, uh, the word fierce is coming, a fierce, powerful transmission of sound waves um, that are coming in to organize and harmonize all of that uh, expansion. So, um, on an individual level, Again, it's about all those expansions, awarenesses, alignments, you know, all of it that you may have been doing personally for the last few years that's coming together. But also then on a collective human level, it is uh, this these powerful, fierce sound transmissions are going to harmonize the... Um, the planet into more of a unified field. So that means more people will start to feel an impetus to get together. Or there are people who have been doing, um, creating new technologies and new, uh, uh, just new, new creations over the last few years. And now somehow all of this is going to get start to become more coherent you know more aligned and so uh there's going to be a push i don't know if push is the right word but m more of a um might feel like a push for you to to walk now in uh the role that you came to play in this next this next phase so individually then we're really being called to become act as a soul embody the soul the spirit and really start to uh, embody that a lot of you have been feeling the the shedding of the old the um, those patterns, beliefs, traumas, all of it coming to the surface to be healed, to be cleared. And uh, granted, there's likely going to be more, continue to be more of that. 
at different levels, at different phases. Um, but really now there is a, uh, a deeper embodiment all the way down to the root of your spirit, your soul essence of what you came to be. Sort of this idea of the little I or the human self connected to the big I, which is um, your connection to the God source, so to speak, the soul. So this um, image is rep- represents the, the sacred heart that uh, we are connecting to now from the back of the heart. So if some of you watched our um, vlog, I think it's a February vlog about the um, stepping into changing density. And uh, I described the six directions, right? North, south, east, west, uh, astral, which is going up from the heart out in front of you. And the distal goes through the back. And the, at that distal point um, is connected to source. It's, a, it's a, a deeper connection, personal deeper connection, the way I would explain it, to source. And so this is uh, what some are calling the sacred heart. And it's in this state that we know what to do. We know yeah. what our part is and what actions to take. So um, this embodiment of soul and um, what I would call also spirit, the spirit, the breath comes through our central vertical channel. From the top of the head, uh, there's an opening down to the perineum or the horror line. Um, and the breath comes through that uh, horror line. And also then awakens and begins to transform the physical body uh, into becoming a less dense human. So this uh, is the theme for, to me, for this coming solstice. So uh, like what I'm noticing is particularly some drawings and things that I've done did, did in 2017, 2018, um, and they're now starting to what I would call awaken. So uh, some of you participated in those planetary synthesis uh, presentations and meditations that I did in 2017 from July to December 2017. Um, and they're still on YouTube. It's kind of raw um, in, the, in the sense that that was my first kind of push to step out um, and, and do things more publicly. So I invited people and we had Zoom meetings uh, and then they were posted on YouTube. So it was my first kind of push to begin to talk sort of in uh, publicly. Uh, and, you know, it, it takes a while to get used to that. So there's a lot of drawings and things that I, you know, I started, I was kind of looking through some of them over the last few days and realizing, oh yeah, I forgot that. I forgot about that. And I forgot about that. You know, we we did some things of even um, putting protection around our cells as they're going through cell division, right? Our cells, uh, the old cells die off when we multiply um, by this by cell division, and they create a, a new cell, and we refresh our cells uh, through this process of mitosis. Um, and during that phase, uh, uh, you know, the the DNA is supposed to, and the chromosomes are line up, and they organize themselves to be split into two. So during that split, um, our our cells are vulnerable to outside forces um, in various ways. 
I won't go into details about that. So, I mean, I even noticed I had drawn an image of uh, protection around um, around that. It's called, I think it was called cytokinesis. It's like the last phase um, of cell division. So I had done things like that and um, worked with subatomic particles, leptons, and anyway, all those things um, are coming back into my awareness and um, noticing other things that I did several years ago of seeing the soul of my family members, you know, and I had drawn little pictures of each of my family members and what their soul would be. Um, and, you know, a lot of you might have wondered too, like, okay, I went through all these activations. Well, what happened to all of that? I thought this was imminent now, you know, it's, we're going to make this uh, thing. And how come things don't seem to be changing that much in our outside world? Um, and what I realized is that we were getting these transmissions and many, many activations and they weren't linear. You know, it was kind of spotty how we were getting uh, these activations and information. Um, and in a sense, I think that's really helped us because uh, the archons, let's say, or these beings that created this phantom matrix that we've been operating in, they were all anticipating uh, this. They've been reading the same materials, you know, it's, it's all out there, Rudolf Steiner, Madame Blavatsky, um, uh, Edward Casey, you know, a lot of these predictions they've been watching as well. And so they had it in their mind that, okay, we're going to stop it. We're going to um, interfere with this by doing, by taking several steps here. But we have gotten all these various transmissions and activations and they weren't in linear order. They seemed all kind of random. And now it's all coming together. So what all these other people around the planet brought in, these activations, it looks like it's starting to become cohesive um, and start to form into uh, a unity consciousness field that um, is going to really catapult us uh, into this next phase, you know, what I'm, what I'm seeing and the things that I've gotten, um, and I know other people have gotten other things as well, um, is, uh, pretty, pretty interesting when I started to look at it all coming together. Like we got transmissions from the galactic center last year of these proteases, uh, they're called protease, um, and those break down proteins. So protease is an enzyme that breaks down protein. And if you think about it, our DNA uh, and RNA is made, the basic substance of it is, is proteins. So it looks like these proteases can break down um, let's call it, let's say inorganic proteins. And I even felt like even, um, let's say, the uh, spike proteins, you know, I don't, I hope that's a safe word to say, but um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Uh, but as you, as those of you listening know, it still comes down to a soul choice. You know, uh, the human is not, quote, in charge, but the soul is in charge. And so the, as the soul is coming in, it really is like uh, the soul and physical body union now, where the soul can become the driver of the body. Whereas before it was like we were, you know, we were connected to our soul, but it was kind of more the soul was out there in a sense. Um, some might call it the higher self. I mean, I feel like we have different levels of higher selves, 
There's the personal soul, the oversoul, the avatar uh, soul aspect, you know, so to speak. And then even even beyond avatar, what we're accessing into into the cosmos um, is even is even more than that. But that's a whole nother topic. So we are being asked to surrender to our souls. So, um, you know, we hear this idea of you have to surrender, you have to surrender. And it's not surrendering to something outside of us or outside forces, but surrendering to our own soul and our connection to the God source that um, is really much easier to, to access now. And when that happens, then more of us are going to be get the inspiration uh, of knowing what to do, what steps to take, what uh, to what we attract, you know. So the law of attraction to me is not just about uh, attracting like material things or attracting, but it's about attracting um, also the people who need your particular gifts or your particular message in the way that you have to offer it. <coughs> and in um, this uh, process of exchange, you then are, we attract also then uh, what we need physically to take care of the physical vessel. Because again, to the soul, the body is a vessel. And when it's unified, with the body and um, we have a, a different kind of relationship then um, the soul knows what the body what is required for the body as well so um, how what this will look like you know obviously you know I don't know but it's that again it's that letting go of thinking it's going to look this way or it's going to look that way or looking for proof from the outside world that um, to get that validation or that things are changing. Because um, those of you listening know we change on the inside first and we feel it. We feel uh, what it is that we're supposed to do. We feel what steps we're supposed to take. You know, just like with this vlog I'm doing, it was like, I mean, it just literally happened today. Um, uh, and I just threw a couple of slides together and put this together and said, okay, I have to do this today and put it out, put it out there. So um, it's to that degree now uh, and when you're out in the community, if you are a coherent energy field of all the shifts that you've made, then you will emanate that out. And you don't have to talk about it. You don't necessarily have to make anyone right or wrong about it. But you just have to be present. And I think the other thing that a lot of, I know some of my friends that I've been chatting with is to um, really be as neutral a witness as we can out in the world. You know, as the old uh, begins to, uh, quote, fall apart, uh, as we're seeing, you know, in certain places and with certain groups and people that... Um, we don't, we learn, we discern what we should engage in, what we should not engage in, witness it and let it go. Like I'll watch some, you know, uh, headlines or things that are going on with government or uh, revelations that are being published, those kinds of things. And I'll tap into it and, but I'll also then leave it. You know, uh, I may get charged up about it, but um, I also have to walk away from it because 
um, the more we engage with, uh, with that and uh, especially feelings of rage and extreme anger, and if you, if you act on it, then we're feeding that same system. We're, we're looping. And so um, in personal growth, on a personal level, that's why a lot of you may have been called or felt the need to uh, unwind old patterns, you know, patterns of thinking, catching when you're in a mind loop and interrupting thought patterns that uh, are really of the same 3D mindset because um, the more we allow ourselves to loop in it, then we can't allow the new pattern uh, to weave through our body. So um, we'll likely see, you know, some some phases as we go through here, but uh, this is definitely another level of, of birthing now as we go through this summer solstice. Uh, and again, everyone is, you know, doing it differently. Um, some people may just be starting to wake up to what, what is going on. Uh, others have been doing this work for a long time, but finding that, um, they're unwinding even deeper patterns. And so you kind of might go back and forth, back and forth. So like, you know, for myself as well, I like went through a phase where um, uh, things were some really powerful things deep inside, a deep pain uh, was being released. And now I've kind of gotten myself back into kind of a, a, a pattern or back into a harmony, you know, uh, really working more on interrupting my thought patterns and um, trying to respond differently uh, to situations or, you know, and family members. And that, that can be the most challenging sometimes, uh, responding differently uh, within, our, within our family because they can be, you know, ingrained uh, patterns that have been going on for years. So, you know, it's important to just be gentle with yourself um i feel like this is really this phase uh a, a coherence and the other thing that i'm noticing is those galactic sun laws if some of you may have participated in that in 2018 uh in december 2018 is that those are coming back and you know, those are really coming back because uh those galactic suns, each one of them um, is really like a, a dimension. So the first galactic sun is the first dimension. The second, it's like a cosmic body that we call a dimension, but it's really literally like a cosmic body of source, you know? Um, and so those laws were embedded, quote, uh, into the dimensionalized field uh, so that we have this inner knowing of what these laws are and laws that not is not as in a as like a dictator right but um, sort of this inner sense of how the cosmos works and what is in order so that we um, co-create in service to one another, service to the all, service to ourselves. Because if we also can't take care of ourselves and honor the human vessel, um, then we can't really serve our uh, source mission as a soul here. So that's what those, in a nutshell, that's what those galactic sun laws are all about. And, um, that's why, uh, that's why they're starting to come back now. They're, they're really activating. And that means that we're being shifted to a whole new dimensionalized system. It may still look the same, but it's a different 
they're operating on different harmonics. Um, and again, because the 15-dimensional system that we've been in has been uh, sort of captured. And those uh, frequencies, let's say, that created the phantom matrix we're, we're leaving that and being sort of moved off into this different direction where uh, it's an 18 dimensional universe and um, how we connect to the cosmos has now changed. And it's all about being heart and soul centered. So we've been being, being prepared for this, uh, you know, for the last few years. Um, the quantum field is field is different. It's it's a different it's a different system. Um, the fractal laws are different. Uh, God's infinite calculus, the mathematical laws. Uh, to create our reality has been slightly changed, you know. Um, they're gonna change even more and more as we continue to evolve and ascend. Yeah, Jenny's saying yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, uh, and the more we can stay aligned in our center, um, <laughs> yes, then. the more we will continue on that bifurcation trajectory and so if you uh if you keep engaging in those mind loops it will keep um quote putting you back into the the old system so and not you know, and, and, and I don't say that to, to scare people, but, uh, you know, that's why it's important to, you know, to the best of your ability, the best best of our ability, you know, to, for some things, we're just going to have to put blinders on, this, on, on the sides of our eyes and uh, watch, you know, we might see people falling and suffering, you know, um, that we really can't help, you know. Uh, at this point, it's like my feeling is all the souls have have chosen, and uh, there's a trajectory for everyone. And it's hard to say that that person that's suffering, you know, chose to do that uh, at a soul level. But um, you will know those who can help that you can help, and those who you can't. Uh, and again, there's someone different for everybody. You see lots of people talking about the same thing now, the same theme, but they're saying it in different words, you know, uh, or slightly different, slightly differently. And, uh, they will attract the people who can hear it in the way that, uh, they have to offer it, you know? So... I think all of you listening, you know, understand. That. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to the next slide here. Um, the red rose transfiguration into love. A lot of people have been seeing really attracted to roses, blooming roses, blue roses. Uh, I saw a white rose that I had drawn in. The summer of 2021 and um, this rose was represented uh, kind of at the time I call it the reanimation of the rose so I think it started with the white, white rose and then uh, you know we've been seeing blue roses I know other people have seen blue roses rose gold roses copper roses red roses i mean so um i'll just talk about this red rose i hope you can hear about uh, so the red rose 
in our 3D world has been associated with romantic love, right? And the red rose in the 3D world has been a fallen rose because romantic love in that programming, you could say, um, has been all about, you know, finding the perfect mate, whether that's a man or a woman. Um, and there has been sort of these, uh, I'll just call them archetypes of the ideal man and the ideal woman, the beautiful woman who's the damsel in distress and the man who's like the Prince Charming uh, come to rescue her, you know? So it's this um, perfect man who is going to take care of me. Um, and the woman is beautiful, but she really needs uh, to be helped, a man to fulfill her life. I think it's gotten better in the last couple of decades. I would hope it has been. But this idea of you have to find your perfect match to fulfill you, you know, to be complete. And so it really sets up this longing for someone outside to fulfill you, to complete you. And that's kind of the idea of the gender splitting, um, the male and the female, the masculine and feminine, that um, we can't be balanced ourselves within ourselves with both. So, you know, it doesn't mean that kind of, that, that romance um, is, is, quote, bad, but when we're um, whole unto ourselves as uh, a feminine and masculine, then um, there's no, there isn't that idea of an agenda when you're looking for somebody else. You're looking for, because then we have these expectations and ideas of what that mate is supposed to, to do for you. And when uh, they can't fulfill that dream, your infatuation with an image that really can't be fulfilled, then you become disappointed or you become angry um, and feel unfulfilled. So then you go on to the next person and the next person, you know. So this has kind of been the game with this uh, fallen red rose in a 3D system. So this new red rose is about love, but it's about real physical love. Um, love as the expression and uh, the breath of the cosmos, you know, in a physical form, I would say, what I would call physical, all the way down, means all the way down to the root. And so the red rose also um, as a physical plant on the earth and, and probably a lot all the other plants as well but um, if you think about it all the living uh, beings on the planet whether they're animals or plants humans we all share the same basic set of DNA and RNA, you know, and, you know, I started to realize that there's, there's a real reason for that, uh, in the fourth harmonic universe, which is the, uh, 10th, 11th and 12th dimensions, sort of the blueprint of the earth and all its, um, living matter we have all they like all coexist uh as one there's not they're not separated out or differentiated yet at that level there's kind of uh so the divas and elementals and um all the the what i would call the light language 
that would be what we call DNA, all coexist together. And uh, it comes from the Emerald Tablets, which is the record of the design of the earth and all life and sentience on the earth, down to the rocks, the minerals, you know, all of it, the waters, they all coexist. Um, it's all written in the Emerald Tablets, and that's why the Emerald Tablets were so important. It, can, it contains information about uh, our light body, the Earth's design, the portal system uh, that's imprinted in the Earth, you know, all of it. So we're all one in that. And so there are genes that this red rose carries of uh, this love, this cosmic breath of love that is uh, sent forth by God's source. And so this, this DNA, the genes, of uh, this red rose is even physical. It's vibrating in the earth matter and um, it can even, what I felt, awaken uh, certain genes in our bodies as well. So that's why I, I call it transfiguration into love but transfiguration into self-love because um, the cleanest way to give love is to also have self-love because otherwise we're, it becomes imbalanced. We're giving and giving, and when we're not feeling that self-love ourselves, then it becomes um, a pattern of depletion. So... This red rose, um, to me, is also uh, gene activations of uh, of love, and when I started thinking about all the other genes and DNA that's written as light language in the higher realms first, and they come through us engaging the quantum field and they're expressed through the animals and plants they're all expressions of love in different ways and different forms so um you know when you think about animal spirits and we look at what do they represent you know, what principles do they represent and what do they have to teach you? Um, you know, there are times, but a lot of times when some of the uh, language can be the same, you know, the horse is like a power animal, the bear is a power animal, or certain plants have, um, or birds have uh, carry grace, you know, these kinds of principles because, and I realize that, that's the beauty of it. They're all expressing those principles in slightly different ways. So when we take flower essences or um, plant medicines, it's expressions of love that we're taking into, you know, our body. We're communing with communing with it uh, again because in the higher realms it was all one. And here we've kind of all individuated out, but there is still this one uh, oneness, and we exchange all these various expressions of love in these different principles. So, like um, grace, honor. Uh, compassion, um, <laughs> dignity, <laughs> right? humility. I mean, those are 
I would say all expressions of uh, cosmic, of cosmic love. So all those high vibrational words that we have can be seen that they have a uh, a gene for it. They have a uh, a DNA light code for those expressions, and so. Each of us, in our own unique makeup, right? Even though we're, we have a similar blueprint as human, our genes are going to express it slightly differently, and that's has to do with the activation um, of our DNA, uh, and I, that gets into I think the astrology of where we were born and what. Um, uh, what planets were aligned, how, and the, uh, we're going on the 13th zodiac, the, the zodiac um, activate our, our genes. So this is what this uh, red rose, to me, the sense and feeling that I was getting from it represents. And I've also, I mean, I've, was even feeling the red rose like right on my tailbone in the root and so you can do that for yourself as well um you know you may even use a blue rose and a copper rose gold rose um white roses and uh meditate with it see how you feel about it uh the rose in its uh, underlying geometry of how it spirals open represents um, the 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 uh, the vertical, the horizontal, and all the diagonal channels kind of all balanced and e expressing uh, as these roses. And obviously, there's many other beautiful flowers as well, and they all play a role um, of cosmic. Uh, grace and love as well but um, I know a lot of people were uh, having experiences with the rose this this spring so that's my take and do you want to okay, I hope that's helpful to you as well so um, we have a uh, our Patreon class coming up. We're going to do a special one on uh, July, no, not July, June, Thursday, June 22nd this week uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'm going to do a special one with my friend uh, Chastity Ann, whose website is uh, alchemyofsophia.com. So we're doing a joint combined class, and whenever we get together and do this, we, we get a lot more richer information. Um, so if you want to uh, join that, you can uh, sign up for our Patreon, which is uh, in the link um, below the video. And um, I'll also put Chastity's website so you can... Um, check hers out as well and just feel the energy see which one resonates for you um we both charge 22 dollars a month for our memberships so uh you know on the patreon too you can sign up for a month uh and then you also get access to all the previous uh recordings and images and um then you can you can um you can uh, discontinue at any time. So if you want to check out our uh, solstice class and meditation, you can you can do that before Thursday, uh, June 22nd. So thank you for listening. I hope this audio uh, came out okay uh, with uh, Sammy's excited background cheers and that uh, this 
Make sense to all of you.